I have a vision. A vision of a Yu-Gi-Oh! ban list, one-third its current size. One that allows all the top decks to remain the top decks, but still unlimits an unbelievable, insurmountable, unfathomable amount of chaff. And I think you and I can prove together here tonight that we can safely take off about 122 cards with no major impact on the game. I've enlisted the help of my chat. They have given me 16 exceptionally powerful deck lists. Using a ban list, I will note momentarily, and we'll be playing a free-for-all, best-of-three, single elimination tournament to determine if Yu-Gi-Oh! is ruined forever. Quick reminder, if you did not watch my previous video, first off, you should watch my previous video. I need the ad revenue. Second off, these are all the cards that were banned that we have moved to a singleton copy because I don't believe in the semi-limited list. After that, we took a bunch of cards that were limited and moved them to three. Here are those displayed. We've got the Forbidden Ones. We've got the Agitos. Agito! We've got Cyberstein. We've got all these cards that you would expect to be broken. And uh, I guess we will see if they are broken after all. All right, first things first, let's go through the individual decks. We've got Armin on Sword Soul. This is Sword Soul. You know, nothing uh, particularly exciting here. Uh, they are playing a copy of Danglong in the extra deck. Uh, they are playing the Arch Nemesis Protoss that we gave them. And of course, they're playing Pot of Greed and Snatch Steel as well. Next up is Digital Duke on Dark Warrior. You can see that this deck has a ton going on under the hood. A bunch of starters like uh, Vision Hero Vion enabled by three copies of uh, Destiny Hero Malicious. We've, of course, got a bunch of unbelievable extenders and starters and uh, maybe some tools that border on FTK. Uh, this was one of the most competent combo decks in Yu-Gi-Oh's history, and we just gave them a bunch of tools so we will check it out. Third is Dunkoro on Prankid. This deck didn't get much. Uh, Instant Fusion 3, 1 for 1 to 3, but importantly, it got Meow Moo from 0 to 1, and that might just be enough to be playable regardless. Wouldn't be a Masochist Banlist tournament without someone representing True Draco. This is Half Miss on Blind. Second True Draco playing one copy of Masterpiece of the True Draco Slaying King. Triple Change of Heart, Triple Card of Demise, Triple Dragonic Diagram, Triple Pot of Desires, and a bunch of banned stuff in the extra deck. Or the side deck, rather. There's no, there's no extra deck for this. We've got Lovita on Tempest FTK. If you're unfamiliar with this deck, it uses Tempest Magician to get an unreal amount of spell counters onto it, facilitated by a bunch of deep draw tools that I unfortunately left legal, things like Card Destruction, Into the Void, Upstart Goblin, Pot of Greed, Chicken Game, and of course, it is also playing an Endymion package because, boy, it's really easy to get counters on your side of the field with those bad boys. When you take cards off the list, usually the number one thing people flock to is Zodiac, and it's not hard to see why. This is Utman 23's list. It's playing Dimension Shift, uh, and then a whole bunch of cards that are now legal. Uh, Speedroid Tear Top in order to make MX Saber Invoker to get the Singleton Rat Pier out. Uh, it's got Kaiser Coliseum in it. You know, enjoy that. And outside of that, it's just a bunch of hand traps. Continue our series of decks that are already meta relevant. We've got Math Mech. This is about as heads up as it gets. It's got some hand traps that specifically counteract the degeneracy that I expect in the 16 decks we've selected. Things like Droll and Lockbird Main, but it's also just doing normal Math Mech stuff, making Laplacian early and often. Next up, we've got to test the metal of some of these more ridiculous decks against what's already good. Here's Sprite. Does anyone have anything interesting to say about Sprite? You've got five seconds to lock in your answers. Next up. Okay, so I'm really concerned about this one. We unbanned a ton of stuff for Dragon Link in particular, and we've got Quantal Think piloting this list. Um, looks really strong, but will it keep up with the metagame's current top threats? Who knows? No Pot of Greed, by the way, in this one. 47 cards. Couldn't find room for Pot of Greed. Okay, I'm just completely addicted to giving this deck a shot. Uh, Reaper Wiz is playing Infernity. Uh, look at all the stuff they've got. Three Archfiend, three Lawn Chair. I, come on, this deck's gotta be good. Speaking of decks, I can't stop putting in here because I personally enjoy the playstyle. Rin PG333 is on Wind Up, and look at this. You could Hunter Loop. It's, it's playing two Hunter for some reason. <laughs> We'll see. The pacifist rat has sent in um, what what appears to be a, a master duel meta screenshot. This is Cash Tira. You know, it's just Cash Tira. Nothing nothing interesting here. It's just Cash Tira. Is what I would say if it was not playing Mecha Phantom Beast, O Lion, and Jet Synchron. That's right. This Cash Tira list has the potential to make Mecha Phantom Beast Auroradon by making Galaxy Tomahawk. We accidentally left some stuff legal for this deck in particular. Look at this. You can even go Cupid Pitch into Nemesis Corridor into Colossus. This is kind of sick. So about a million of you submitted FTKs. Uh, this is one of the two that I actually found compelling. This is the one, the only Morphtronic FTK. And you'll notice it's playing Prime Planet Pellerino. It's like... <laughs> the backup plan is just Tier Lament. 
<laughs> sure. Speaking of Tier Lament, this is the deck I was the most afraid of. Uh, it turns out the things that are the most scary when you take off individual cards aren't silly FTKs. They're the decks that were currently just very good. We took off Mudora and Agito, so if any deck's going to break it, it's going to be this one, and I'm going to be honest, this looks really, really good. Finally, third best deck in the current format, we have got Nachuria Runic. This deck got a lot of uh, additional copies of Mudora, but also things like Triple Instant Fusion and Triple One for One I really like as well, just a way to ensure you are always finding Camellius and Mole Cricket. The number one problem this deck has in paper is an inability to consistently see both halves of the deck, and I think that has pretty much been resolved by the inclusion of some truly unbelievable draw spells. By the way, real quick before we move on, a lot of you were talking a lot of shit because in my video I said this deck is a top three deck. It is. I don't know what to tell you. That you're wrong if you don't think so. What do you think the third best deck is? What do, what do you think the third best deck is? It's a top two deck? Whoa, 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 whoa. I believe in Sprite. Sprite. Okay, no, then what's the second best deck? Math Mech. Okay. That's fine. I don't think so, but that's fine. And finally, you know I had to do it to him. Last turn, baby! So, <laughs> this looks kind of like Salaman Great, but I assure you they are trying to resolve last turn here. Um... <laughs> To what end? I could not tell you. <laughs> Check out the treasure panda. God, I hope this t this works. I hope this works so bad. So the way we try to organize this is that the top four decks are not going to be able to meet each other until semis. So theoretically, we could have a semifinal closeout of decks that are currently tier one. So we've got Kashtira versus Windup. Got Morphtronic versus Dark Warrior. Sword Soul versus Zoo. Nachuria Runic versus Ishtir. Ooh, I'm excited for that one. Prankid versus Tempest FTK. Math Mech versus Last Turn. Infernity versus Dragon Link and True Draco versus Sprite. All right, we are gonna get started with a banger. This is Zodiac versus Sword Soul, and let's jump right in. Here we go. This is game one, Armin on Sword Soul, leads with a Sword Soul of Moye. That's pretty good. Gonna summon a token to their side of the field. Afterwards, Chi Xiao comes down, followed by Moye Trigger. God, have you gotten excited for this yet? Oh, we found a Merchants, great. Uh, so let's just go ahead and get, what the heck did we just get? A Hara? Uh, we'll go Long Wan and a token into Changying, trigger the effect of the Long Wan. Uh, set to and pass. That's um, that's Sword Soul, folks. All right, uh, they're going to begin with a copy of Pot of Desires, then followed up with a Tanky. Uh, that Tanky is going to uh, turn into a Zodiac, and then they'll make MX Saber Invoker, which will get hit with an infinite impermanence. But the Book of Moon preserving the impermanence, the Blackout popping the MX Saber Invoker doesn't do anything, okay? Uh, so at resolution, Changing will be able to banish the on-field one, but unfortunately, uh, the normal summon Zodiac Wrap here is still very good. From here, you can trigger the effect of the Blackout for a token. Uh, they're going to go Chocanine into Tiger Mortar, into Hammer Kong, into Borbo, into a direct attack. Oh, based. It's Zeus. Who could have expected that? That'll send everything on the field to the graveyard. They're going to set one and pass. All right, we have drawn Pot of Desires off the top because we're a gamer. We're going to draw a couple of cards. Oh, God! Okay, there's a Zeus activation. Uh, I believe we have no more activations on it, so we are going to go into a Taya off of this uh, Klesia. That's going to summon a token. Then we can use um, this Adhara to get back the Moye. We're going to go into Chi Xiao here. Chi Xiao 1, Taya 2. We're going to send a copy of Adhara, and we will go ahead and grab an Emergence, and we'll normal summon the Moye. Moye, reveal Emergence, summon a token, uh, trigger the effect of the Ashana while we have a non- um, a non effect monster on our side of the field, and it's Baxia time, baby. This is uh, this is a wrap. Uh, well, you know what? It turns out a Zeus and a Dream is not sufficient. Uh, there's the Protoss, and there is the Surrender. Well, that's bleak. Quick game one for Sword Soul. Let's see if they can do it in game two. We've got a pretty standard open here. We're gonna begin with a Zodiac Barrage. Barrage here, target itself. That's gonna be met with an Ash Blossom. One of the few times Ash Blossom is decent against this archetype. They're gonna go for a Tiger Mortar into a Borbo into a Dryden. Set one and pass. Wow, in the year of our Lord 2023. We'll go Vishutta and that clears the Dryden. Wow, this is really incredible stuff. Uh, they're gonna use the Dryden to pop the Monk, but that's gonna trigger the Sathana in hand. Oh my God. We can still Vishutta the back row and shields down. Let's normal summon. Moye. Moye here is going to summon a token to their side of the field. Let's go into Chi Xiao. Chi Xiao effect. Moye effect. We're going to draw some cards. Grab a pot of desires off the top of the deck along with a Long Yuan. That emergence is going to get ashed a little late on it, buddy. We'll go for the pot of desires. Any worm here wins the game. Uh, that's a worm. <laughs> We're going to go Protoss here. Target uh, the monk. Call Earth. No need to do that. Absolutely unnecessary. Did not need to do that. Come on. <laughs> you could have just attacked for lethal. You don't have to be an asshole about it. All right. Draw for turn. 
Uh, it's a uh, pitchable card for Sword Soul or uh, for Long Yuan, I think. Uh, we're going to go for Taya here. Uh, that's going to be met with an infinite impermanence. Uh, if only we had some way to further extend. Okay, well, we do. Uh, let's go for a long one, summon a token. Uh, afterwards, let's go for Chang Ying, trigger long one. That's 12, and we are at 43. Go to combat, attack over the monster. 46 direct will do it, and it looks like a quick 2-0 for Sword Soul. Unsurprising, one of the close to top decks from the existing format, taking it over a deck that was powerful in 2017. All right, next up is Dunkoro on Prankid versus Lovita on Tempest FTK. It looks like Dunkoro has won the die roll, which is pretty important. They're going to begin with a copy of Water Chanters of the Temple. They're going to follow it up with a Rite of Aramisir, getting an adventure token and a Fateful Adventure Normal Summoning Prankid Lampsies, and it's like it's 2022 never ended. They're going to go for the effect of the Fateful Adventure, pitching the Draco back. That Draco back is going to equip to the adventure token. Then we'll go Wandering Griffin Rider into Meow Meow Moo, trigger the effect of the Lampsies. 500 to the opponent. We will summon a Fancies and go to Doodle Do. Fancies, Doodle Do. And then after Afterwards, we are going to get a Dropsies from deck that's going to grab a Pandemonium to handle, trigger the effect of the Doodle Doe to get a couple of guys back, fire Prankid's place, and then activate the effect in order to get another Dropsies. We will go Prankid's Pranks, popping the Fancies to get a token to our side of the field, and go for a second Doodle Doe, which will trigger the Dropsies and go into a Roxies. From here, we can make Bow Wow Bark, trigger the effect of the Roxies to summon a Fancies, and then we can set two and pass. It's, it's just, it's Prankid. I don't know what to tell you. It's just Prankid. Okay, what's next? Servant of Endymion, pretty good start. We'll go Instant Fusion. That's going to be met with the Bow Wow Bark. That's going to add two cards back to hand. Oh my god, that could do anything. We'll go Millenniumizer Strict. That's a nice one. We're going to follow it up with Spell Power Control. Uh, and then afterwards, we'll triple Tactics Talents. That's going to fiend out the Griffin Rider. We're going to chain Millenniumizer Strict. They'll chain Infinite Impermanence, but that's everything. All four Triple Tactic Talents and pretty bad placement on that Servant, unfortunately. Allure of Darkness afterwards. Uh, we're going to banish this Endymion. We're going to go Upstart Goblin. Magical City of Endymion. Fire off an Allure of Darkness. Ah, okay, let's uh, let's card destruction. They're going to shade Prankid's Pandemonium in order to go into Weather Washer. And I imagine that is, uh, that is, that is going to be the end of the game. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's... Uh, that's, uh, you want to say that? Yeah, goodbye. Okay, quick game one. Game two looking a little bit better. Game two looking a little bit better. Okay, uh, we are going to begin with, I guess, probably Upstart Goblin. <laughs> Go ahead and draw a card. Ooh, that's a nice one. Master Serban. Look at that. We've got two Water Enchanters at the Temple. That's going to be met with Ash Blossom. That's unfortunate because if that gets stuck in the zone, we are screwed. We're going to go Perform Pal Auto Synchron to get it out of the zone. And then we'll go into Baron to Fleur and Pass. That's the FTK, actually. That's the entire FTK. Water Enchantress for Ride of Aramisir, and there's Droll and Lockbird. Oh, they're still they're still going for it. Okay. Wait, what? What was Fateful Adventure doing? We're under Droll. Oh, you can equip it. I see. Uh, they'll go Nightmare Phoenix and pass turn. Uh, cool. <clears throat> Uh, well, there's Master Cerberus. We'll go ahead and pop the uh, the Nightmare Phoenix and then get in for a million damage. And shockingly, I think we figured out a way to win this one. Um, uh, okay, right comes down. Um, then normal summon dropsies. And all right, okay. Well, that's the FTK functionally, you know. Uh, that's uh, pretty much the FTK. I would say that that is the FTK. Well, folks, time for that all-important game three. And, oh, if only that pot of greed was a hand trap. Uh, looks like the Prankid player is going first here, and they've opened everything. Right of Aramis here is going to get a token to their side of the field, followed up with a Fateful Adventure, and Prankid's Dropsies. Bedge, 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 bedge. We're going to go Fateful Adventure effect in order to grab a Wandering Griffin Rider from deck to hand, then trigger the effect of the Draco back in Graveyard to equip it to an Adventure token. We'll summon the Wandering Griffin Rider into a Meow Moo, trigger the effect of the Dropsies for what? Fancies? Yeah, Fancies. We'll go into Doodle Doe, and then we will activate the effect of the Fancies, and the effect of the Doodle Doe. We'll get a Lamp Seas, and we'll trigger Doodle Doe. We'll get a Pandemonium, Doodle Doe, grab a bunch of cards back, including a Pranks. We're going to activate Pranks, use Pranks, pitching this copy of Dropsies we added back to hand. And then we're going to make a Bow Wow Bark, treat the effect of the Lampsies. That Lampsies is going to get the one that we're missing, or a second Fancies, I actually don't know. Uh, we're going to set two, and then at end step, we're going to go uh, Prank its Pranks in order to shuffle a bunch of cards back and draw a card. Uh, okay, let's see what we can do here. Uh, lead with Servant of Endymion, because we want the uh, counters on it. <laughs> Not leading with Pot of Greed. It's very funny. Instant Fusion, same deal as last time. We are going to go for the uh, Millenniumizer Strict, followed up with an Upstart Goblin. And then uh, th this guy, you know, that could, that could do something. Cosmic Cyclone targeting this copy of... Servant of Endymion followed up with a Pot of Greed. They're going to follow it up with a Prankid's Pandemonium into a Battle Butler. We'll draw two. Lampsies, Dropsies. Unfortunately, I don't think this is going to do it. They're going to go Roxies here. And then a Point of Resolution. They can pretty much do anything they want. They'll go Allure of Darkness and Banish a card. Normal summon the Skullcrabat Joker. That's good. That's good. That's good. Uh, okay. Time limit win. That's... 
Yeah, well, if it wasn't the time limit, it was going to be the existing board. All right, next up, we've got Chrono on Sprite versus Half Miss on Blind Second True Draco. So uh, <laughs> that's, let's see. Uh, Sprite player going first, and surprisingly, they're going to lead with a copy of Nimble Beaver. That's going to summon from their deck a Nimble Angler. Next, they're going to special summon a red and go into a Sprite. They're going to activate the effect of the gigantic Sprite to summon a Swap Frog. And oh, great, they're on Toad stuff too. Swap Frog send a Swap Frog. They're going to go Swap Frog to put it back into the hand. Special summon it again, sending the Nimble Angler. Triggering the effect of the Swap Frog is Chain Link 2. Oh, forgetting that they have no other... <laughs> that was a tactical misplay. That was a tactical misplay. So if you're unfamiliar, uh, Swap Frog... If you activate the effect and you have no frogs in deck, can still resolve because it can send from field, including itself. All right, they're going to just make uh, Piers Melfi of the Forest and pass. That's uh, not going to be enough. Lead with Monarch Stormforth, followed up with Disciples of the True Draco Phoenix. Real quick, I, I want to point out uh, Masterpiece has, has entered the building. Uh, this Disciples trades for Smashers. Smashers uh, does not do anything because this guy was made using a spell card. And um, oh my god, we are actually going to lose. We're legitimate. Okay, <laughs> game two, game two. If we lose a game after opening Pot of Greed Delinquent Duo, something is fundamentally wrong, all right? True Draco has just <laughs> ascended to a level beyond God if it wins this one. All right, we're going to begin with a copy of Pot of Greed, I imagine. No, we're beginning with Delinquent Duo. We don't want to walk into Ash Blossom. Uh, we got the only monster remaining in the hand. Let's go Pot of Greed, special summon to Swap Frogs. Uh, Nimble Angler in Graveyard. We'll summon a couple copies of Nimble Beaver, and then afterwards we're going to set a Swap Frog to the Graveyard. Jet here. Jet can grab pretty much anything. We're going to grab Smashers. Swap Frog effect. Uh, are we going to mess it up twice? Probably not. We'll go Gigantic Sprite. That's going to summon Blue from deck. Blue effect. That blue is going to get a Carrot. Special Carrot. Go into Bujinki Akashima. New one here. Special summon these Swap Frogs, and let's go into a Toad. This is, I mean, it's just unbelievable. Uh, Dragonic Diagram, pretty good draw here. They're going to go for a Swap Frog. Uh, but lead with a Dark Ruler, no big deal. We do have Smashers. Going to go Pot of Desires here. Draw a couple of cards. Uh, we'll go True Draco Heritage. We hit the Smash. No big deal. They don't have a monster. Uh, we're going to go Dynamite Knight to set uh, the, what, True King's Return. We'll banish that instead. We'll go Dragonic Diagram. Use its effect to pop the back row, which is Apocalypse, in order to eat the Gigantic Sprite and follow it up with a Heritage. Heritage effect. Draw two. Heritage Tribute, the second. Jesus. Okay, it's cool. It's cool. We'll, we'll figure out a way to proc the Dynamite Knight. They're going to do that on uh, response to the called by. Uh, we do get to actually eat this entire chain and then triple tack afterwards. So all we need is a really good uh, draw to, and we could do this. Uh, Toad is going to grab back Nimble Beaver. Oh, that's sick. Nimble Beaver effect. That's going to summon from uh, Graveyard another Nimble Beaver. We'll draw a couple of cards. Those are decent ones, so we'll go Sprint here, send an Angler, Angler effect, we'll summon back a couple of monsters, or just one, we'll go into Gigantic Sprite, but thankfully that does have more attack than the Dynamite Knight, we'll go Sprite Blue, okay, it's Jover, uh, Sprite Blue into Sprite Jet, Sprite Jet into, what, uh, Starter, go to the Battle Phase, uh, this in Battle Phase, we'll go Carrot, uh, we'll attack in, um, Dragonic Diagram protects, main two will go Melfi of the Forest, Melfi of the Forest effect to grab Penny, where's Caddy? All right, whatever. Uh, Dark Ruler no more again. Card of Demise. No big deal. Double Cross should clear here. In a Pot of Greed. In a Terraforming. Into Duality. Into Stormforth. Uh, they're going to Tribute Melthy of the Forest. Trigger Apocalypse to eat the other. Um, Link 2. We'll go Sprite Double Cross. Targeting the monster. Uh, Masterpiece will eat it in response. Dragonic Diagram afterwards. Activate True Draco Heritage. Draw 2 again. Change of Heart. It's Change of heart back, my Dynamite Knight. You are kidding me. No, dog. This shit is so swingy. How did we lose that one? All right. Next up is Dragon Link versus Infernity. A uh, Quantal Think piloting the Dragon Link deck and Reaper Wiz piloting the Infernity deck. Quantal Think not making room in the deck for Pot of Greed, by the way. 47 cards in here. Couldn't find uh, room for it. All right. Uh, Quantal won the die roll. They're going to begin with a Chaos Space that grabs a White Dragon Wyver Burster. That's going to link into a Striker Dragon. Afterwards, they're going to go ahead and grab this Boot Sector launch, and then they are going to Special Summon Black Dragon Clap Serpent into Romulus. Black Dragon Clap Serpent 1, Romulus 2, and down comes Infinite Impermanence. Pretty good choke point here. Unfortunately, we do have the way to play around it. We'll go Chaos Space and chain the effect of this Quick Launch. That's going to grab a Rocket Tracer into an LP. Uh, next, we're going to Normal Summon... What was that? We Normal Summoned Valor to go into... 
the Link 3 Triple Burst Dragon. We'll go Brotar from deck and then Boralend into, whoa, Bestial Magnemut. Trigger the effect on Field of Bestial Magnemut. And then afterwards, we're going to special summon the Rocket Tracer into Baron de Flore, a 10-star monster. And step will go uh, Druid Swarm. We're going to get to set a Branded Beast as well. Okay, let's see what we do here. Begin with Danger Nessie. Uh, we're going to go Danger Nessie here. We uh, hit the Arch Fiend. Afterwards, we're going to go uh, Jackalope, pitching the Fiendish Rhino Warrior. That's going to get Necromancer. Great stuff. Instant Fusion here, uh, targeting this copy of Arch Fiend. That Instant Fusion is going to get Millenniumizer Strick. We're going to normal summon a Necromancer, activate the effect. Uh, then we're going to go Curious. Curious gets eaten by an Effect Veiler. We'll Millenniumize, targeting the Effect Veiler. Branded Beast, targeting the Millenniumizer Strict. Then at point of resolution, we can activate the effect of the Bestial Druus Worm to pop the Curious as well. Curious is affecting Graveyard Triggers, and Reaper Wiz surrenders. Unfortunate. All right, time for game two. This time, the Infernity player is going first into Droll and Lockbird. Okay, Nessie effect. Uh, we hit Nessie. That's, well, at least we're playing our own Droll and Lockbird. Um, I guess we take something out of their hand. All right, I mean, as long as we can clear the uh, Dragon Ravine, we're, we're fine here, right? Uh, but we cannot clear the Dragon Ravine, so we probably lose. Uh, we're going to go into Seyfert, into Chaos Emperor, the Dragon of Armageddon, which will do it. Allows you to add back the Seyfert, trigger the effect of the Seyfert in order to pitch the Chaos Dragon Levineer and grab a Lubellion. We'll go Lubellion for Magnemut. Magnemut target the Nessie, and then we can trigger the on-field effect of the Magnemut to go into uh, Druid Swarm at the end step. We'll go Lubellion for a Branded Beast and go to the battle phase. 1800 direct, and then we'll make Striker Dragon. Activate the effect of Striker Dragon for Boot Sector launch. Go into Heavenly Spheres. Spheres pass! FTK time. All right, uh, let's draw for turn. Uh, that's that's a guy. We'll normal summon it and go to the battle phase to chase out the Hieratic Seal. Uh, that's going to do that. Uh, they're not actually even going to target their monster. They're going to go Magnemut on field. Walk over the Magnemut. Main phase two will go Reborn targeting the Jackalope. They let it go. Let's go into Cherubini. Cherubini here targeting Fiendish Rhino Warrior. That's going to send from deck to graveyard a copy of Infernity Sage sending an Archfiend into Return of the Reaper into Infernity Archfiend into Gamma. Um, we do get to protect it, but that's it. Uh, we'll draw a couple of cards. Okay, we're still cooking. Instant Fusion into Millenniumizer Strict, into Apollosa, into, uh, Pass Turn. Uh, we can negate the Druid Swarm once. All right? We can negate it one time. Uh, that's not gonna be enough, as both of these cards can test the Apo. Um. Hmm. I believe we are just dead here, right? Yeah, Dragon Ravine clears. Um, well, looks like Infernity will not be cooking today, unfortunately. Next up, we've got RinPG333 on Windup versus Player on Cash Tira. I think we had to replace this person a couple of times, so let's uh, let's jump in. Uh, hand looks pretty good for Cash Tira. Dimension Shifter, Pot of Greed, Fenrir, Unicorn, Theosis. Uh, not not terrible, not awful. Uh, we're going to begin with Pot of Greed. That's going to draw a couple of cards. And there's Droll and Lockbird. See, that's why Pot's bad. They're going to go Fenrir, target it with Theosis. They're going to go ahead and get a Unicorn. It should have led with Shifter. Wouldn't that have played around Droll? Uh, afterwards, we're going to go for Speedroid Terror Top. Activate the effect of Terror Top to grab a Takatomborg. Uh, that's going to trigger Unicorn and get Drolled. Don't think this deck can win under Droll, but I'm willing to be proven wrong. Zenmaity here. Zenmaity's going to grab a Magician. Oh, wait. We actually have both Sharks already in the hand. So we're going to get to banish the Magician face down, but we can go Shark into Shark. And then afterwards, we can make IP Masquerade and Normal Summon Rat. Trigger the effect of Rat targeting Shark. And then what? We make Verte Anaconda. What the hell is... Oh, we're just making DP? What the heck? This is just a DPE deck? All right, all right yeah, whatever. Uh, take uh, take eight. Uh, b back to you, idiot. All right, uh, draw for turn. Cast your birth. Literal best thing it could be. Uh, the Fenrir chases out the DP. Of course, we'll trigger the DP in graveyard. Then we'll go birth. Masquerade here probably has to go for unicorn. Yep, that's what they're gonna do. And it looks like they're pitching the uh, Nibiru for it. That's rough. Unicorn here is a free special. Really crazy. They'll grab another birth. Uh, that birth is going to summon back a Fenrir, and this should be all she wrote. Fenrir gonna grab a copy of Rise Heart. Gonna trigger the effect of the Rise Heart. Go to the battle phase. Fenrir into the unicorn. Banish it face down. Attack directly for 24. 25 and Rin is going to surrender. Rip Aroni. All right, time for game two. This one's looking a little better. We've got Birdman in the opener. That's funny. We'll go Terra Top here. Trigger the effect of the Terra Top to get a copy of Takatomborg. Go Takatomborg. Overlay into Zen Maity. That will probably chase out. Ooh, it didn't even chase out the Imperm. Uh, we're going to go into Zen Maintenance here. It's kind of a weird hand. Ugh, and the one one of these that doesn't do uh, triple tactics thrust. We'll go E-Telly here for a wielder. Uh, and then we're going to normal summon the Birdman. And down comes the rock. What a cool card. Uh, we'll go Tasking afterwards, which can get FD. And then we'll activate FD, pitching the Celestial in hand for DPE. We'll go DPE here. 
here popping itself and this copy of Nibiru, but this DP is going to have to put in a lot of work. Um, it might be able to do so because this hand is not great. Uh, the Imperm here is kind of frustrating. Uh, DP does get to trigger in Graveyard. Scareclaw Cash Tira here is going to banish the Birth, and we'll go Theosis for what? Unicorn? A Unicorn for Birth? Let's go Diablosis. Banish what? An access code and the the DP and just hope that Zeus is enough? I mean, it might be. Uh, oh my god. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I was like, we drew the only thing that turns off Celestial, but that's not true. Um, we'll go Dasher here, uh, pop Nibiru, and then <laughs> trade with the Zeus. Wait, this is cooking. Main phase two Celestial. Wait, we're cooking. We're cooking. Hold up. We are actually cooking. Birdman bounce the rat. Special itself. Okay, we're, we're not really cooking. We are not cooking, actually. No, that, that is pretty much... The extra deck's too tight to be able to play good stuff. Uh, we're going to go into Unicorn, into Theosis. God, this deck just does everything. Into Fenrir, into the battle phase. Uh, trigger Unicorn, banish another card face down. Eat that Magician. Second main, Fenrir, grab an Arise Heart. Rise Heart effect. And then trigger the effect. Uh, banish Big Bang. Go for three mana Rise Heart. Pass. What are they playing around? They know the card in hand. I mean, Wind Up Brad is pretty good, but it's no Arise Heart good. Uh, all right, well, that is the end of the game. All right, next up, we've got Dark Warrior versus Telephon FTK splashing tier laments. Listen, they're doing what they have to. Uh, we've got Digital Duke playing the Dark Warrior list and Tsubat on this abomination. Uh, looks like Dark Warrior has won the die roll. They're going to begin with a copy of Reinforcement of the Army. They're going to normal summon on Armageddon Knight and send to the graveyard a copy of Shadow Mist. Shadow Mist here is going to grab from deck to hand a Malicious. We can special summon that copy of Dark Refer by pitching the Malicious, and then it's Ice Hold time. We're going to grab Connector, activate the effect of Ice Hold for four, and we'll summon another Armageddon Knight. Armageddon Knight here is going to be able to send from deck to graveyard a Distrudo. Distrudo, target the Armageddon Knight, and we can make a seven. From here, we're going to go into a Power Tool Dragon. Oh, God. Oh, it's just for DDR. Okay. Uh, we're going to activate the graveyard effect of uh, the Divine Sword Phoenix Blade to trigger the DDR to trigger Armageddon Knight again. We're going to send a Zephyros. Zephyros bounces back. Remember when people were doing this in Constructed? Oh, my God. Okay. We're going to go for DDR once again, targeting the Armageddon Knight. I don't know what we can even still send. Uh, or Oh, Orcus Tarpor is pretty good. Uh, three Mad Appaloosa, and then we'll go for Malicious. Next, we're going to go for Codebreaker Virus Swordsman. That's funny. Uh, we're going to go into Virus Berserker, trigger the effect. Uh, we'll go ahead and grab a Zero Day and a Virus Swordsman to go into Phantom Knights of Rusty Bardish. That's an ingenious way to get that going. Ancient Cloak here is going to grab a copy of Silent Boots. We'll special that, and then we'll activate one for one, pitching the Neo Space Connector for an Infernal Knight Renowned. That's going to add the Snatch Steel back to hand before we go into Verte Anaconda and trigger the effect of the Malicious again because he's a three. And then we'll go for a Phantom Knights of Shade Brigandine here and make an IP Masquerade. And we'll go Harp Horror finally for an Orcus Nightmare. Go into a Galatea, the Orcus Automaton, in order to make what? Uh, Orcus Crescendo. And and end the whole thing by activating Divine Sword Phoenix Blade, Verte Anaconda, in order to make uh, DPE, and we've got 1,600 life points to our name. Okay. What are we doing? Mass Driver might win here on its own. Uh, we're going to do... They pick one, and they immediately hit it. That's so funny. Uh, they're going to go Gub here that chases out an Apollosa, and uh, that's it. That's the whole game. All right, but this time the FTK player is going first. Oh, good, and Nibiru. All right, uh, so they're going to begin with a copy of One for One, I imagine. One for One pitching the Gub that's going to summon a Morphtronic Telephon from deck. We're going to normal summon Merly. We'll activate the Merly effect, and we milled a Kelbeck and a Celiac. Uh, we're going to grab a Sheer into hand, and we, oh my god, we hit Mudora and Trivi Karma and Clockwork Knight. This is the best deck of all time. Uh, okay, so Morphtronic Telephone here. Uh, we are going to go into uh, Link Haribo, grab a Telephone off the one for one. Telephone for Telephone. Telephone for Telephone. Telephone for Telephone. Telephone Barricade Board Blocker here. Telephone for Telephone. Telephone for Telephone. Ter okay, this is the last opportunity you have to Nibiru. Oh, no, actually, they're going for a Curious Line. You're fine. We're going to go Cannon Soldier, mill a whole bunch here. Trigger the effect of the Scream in order to grab Celiac. Activate Pellerino. Pellerino grab Tier Limit Cash Tira. Sheeran here. Uh, pitch this Tier Limit Cash Tira. Hit Agito. Agito! And a whole bunch of other stuff. Oh, my God. They hit uh, Shadow Mist here as well. Uh, they're going to go ahead and grab Vion. Telephone for Telephone. Telephone for Telephone. This is so greedy on this Nibiru. They're being so insanely greedy. Oh, my God. Eve of the World Chalice, Justicar! Okay, no big deal. Okay, Nibiru. Finally, Nibiru. Okay. All right, well, that's the end of the game. Is what I would say if I did not realize that you can summon uh, a monster off of Ebe and then succession that back because we put the Link Karibo back into the extra deck with Mudora and we used Curious to add Pot of Greed to hand. So we actually get to continue doing the FDK. It is, It has not ceased yet. 
Telephone for telephone. Telephone for telephone. Telephone for pot of greed, baby. Cash Tira. Tier Laments. Summon that bad boy. Activate the effect. Uh, top three cards of the deck to the graveyard. We are out of cards in deck. We're going for Mud Dragon. Going for Nightmare Cerberus. Firewall Dragon in order to grab that uh, Cannon Soldier. And then Telephone for telephone. Telephone for telephone. Saruya. Saruya effect. Special. The oh my god, we did it. We did it. We milled the entire deck. Oh my god, we did it! <laughs> Morphtronic sweep! Oh, this is the worst. This is the worst. This one, I can't... Oh boy. This one can't advance, by the way. This one literally should not be allowed to advance. Alright, uh, listen. I, I have faith in Dark Warrior. I think that they can do it. Uh, opening Pot of Greed is a good start. Uh, let's go Pot of Greed. Uh, normal summon uh, Armageddon Knight. Actually, a pretty weak open, all things considered. Uh, they'll go into I sold here. Uh, I sold for four. They're going to mill a whole bunch of cards and then summon from deck an Armageddon Knight. Armageddon Knight here in order to send a Destrudo, a Destrudo here targeting the Armageddon Knight. Uh, has to go into Apo here and not the seven because we have too many equips in our hand. Uh, we're going to go Phoenix Blade here and then afterwards we can activate DDR to bring back the Armageddon Knight. I mean, we still get to do it. Uh, Armageddon Knight here to send a copy of Zephyros. Zephyros effect. Um, uh, bouncing the... Yeah, no, this is, this is decent. Uh, we'll bring back the Armageddon Knight once again. Uh, trigger the effect of the Armageddon Knight. Sending a copy of Harp Horror, Virus Swordsman. It's literally the exact same line. We're going to go Virus Berserker. Grab back the Zero Day and the Virus Swordsman. Make Rusty Bard. We'll go Rusty Bardish. In order to send a copy of Ancient Cloak, which we can use to get uh, Silent Boots. And then we can go into Verite Anaconda. Then we can DDR. Bring back... What, what the hell could we possibly still need to Armageddon Knight for? A Symbol Skeleton. Okay, uh, we'll go Harp Horror for a Nightmare. That's going to turn a Galatea. Galatea Effect. We will go for Crescendo. And then finally, we can go for Shade Brig. Uh, make something here. IP Mascarena. Divine Sword Phoenix Blade. You know, DP. 1,600 life points, by the way. If you could just make two Gaga -ga Cowboys, we could do it. Scream is a good start. Heavy Storm is a second good start. It's going to chase out the Climax. Uh, we're going to tribute over their monster for... Uh, for Gamsiel. We're going to go for Keldo. Uh, and then we're going to set one and pass. Anyone's game. Uh, they're going to go Unicorn, target the set monster. Uh, we're going to go Mudora, target the Phoenix Blade. So honestly, who's you know who's in control of the duel now? Uh, they're going to go Battle Phase. I, is this lethal? Is this lethal? I can't, is this lethal? Is this lethal? Is this lethal? This is a lethal. Okay. All right, next up, we've got two pretty good decks. Runic Necheria versus Tier Lament. And uh, if you look at the Tier Lament player's opener, uh, it does reflect the reality of playing Tier Lament at this time. Um, <laughs> they are going first. They're going to begin with a copy of Chicken Game. That's going to draw... Okay, good enough. Good enough. It's Rhino Heart. Okay, whew, we're in it, baby. All right, we'll go Tier Lament, Cash Tira. Um, okay, it wasn't that good. Uh, they're going to go Instant Fusion for a Hugin. Hugin effect in order to grab a Fountain Sacred Tree. In order to grab a Mole Cricket. Normal Mole Cricket activate the effect. That's a pretty juicy Ash Blossom. Chain Blessing. Uh, special Camellus. And then a Point of Resolution. We can activate Camellus. Send a copy of Sacred Tree. Use Sacred Tree. And go for Talents. Talents is going to take that Rhino Heart. Stardust Charge Warrior. They're going to Chicken Game to draw a card. And then they're going to activate Blessing in order to summon out the Camella. They're going to go for a Dugaris the Timeless. Uh, they're going to draw two, discard one. They're going to discard this copy of uh, Keldo and then go Runic Fountain. They're safe playing a couple turn game just because their deck is really good. Uh, chicken game next. Um, they're going to draw a card. Mudora, pitch a Guido. A Guido! They're going to activate a Guido and Mudora to get this Keldo out of the graveyard. And they hit, you know, they hit Kelbeck and they hit Tier Lament Cash. They kind of need a name there. There's a name. Uh, Mudora and also we hit Keldo and also we hit Sheeran. Um, so that means that, unfortunately, we are not going to be able to summon anything. Um, and uh, we lose, uh, is also what it means. Okay, uh, there's Hugin. Uh, that's going to be met with the uh, chicken game to destroy. We'll get in for 12. Uh, and main phase, we'll just pass. We'll just pass. Hugin going to the graveyard. Uh, off instant fusion, by the way. Okay, Pellerino. Pellerino is not sufficient. That's going to, that's, that's, yep, that's the end of the game. We can basically just runic them out at this point. Uh, we will ash it, but then we'll surrender right afterwards. All right, game two, game two. All right, game two. It, it, it could happen. It could happen. Uh, okay, so we are going to begin with a... This is a pretty good hand, actually. Uh, Pellerino here in order to grab Sheeran. Sheeran effect. Uh, we'll pitch, I imagine, into Guido. Nope, we're going for Kelbeck. Kelbeck effect, and we did actually hit King of the Swamp and Scream, uh, but unfortunately our opponent hit two fucking copies of Nechuria's Sacred Tree. Wow, this is like the worst matchup in the history of time. 
Uh, we're going to normal summon Tierlum and Rhino Heart. We're going to send a copy of Merly to the graveyard that's going to turn into, what, a Rukulos? That's cool. Nope, they're making Graffa. Next up is Redoer and Drydent. So Redoer, Drydent, Graffa. That's, that's got to do it. Uh, Runic Flashing Fire here. That's going to be met with a Redoer. So see ya. Uh, next, we'll go uh, Hugin, pitching this copy of Keldo for cost. So when we activate the graveyard effect, it doesn't do anything. We'll go Graffa here. They'll chain Freezing Curses. We'll chain Dryden to pop the Graffa so it actually resolves. And then we will finally get to resolve the effect of our graveyard monster to go into Kaleido Heart. At point of resolution, we can Kaleido to shuffle back the Hugin. And we can Agito in order to mill some more cards, maybe keep extending. Um, or not. Well... Okay, um, Celiac is pretty good here. They're going to go get Camelus off Camelus. We're going to activate the effect of Kaleido Heart to negate it. Then we'll activate the effect of the Kaleido Heart in Graveyard. We can send a Havness to the Graveyard, then activate Havness. That's going to allow us to go into Rukulos, and we get to still go. We, uh, we pop the, uh, the Camelus. Um, we can stop the Blessing with the effect of Rukulos. Rukulos triggers in Graveyard. Uh, now all that's going to matter is how many cards they can draw off this. Uh, we'll get back the Redoer. Uh, we'll activate Redoer. We grab a Spell. Go to the battle phase. Flashing fire comes down. Uh, that theoretically could summon, so we are allowed to Rukulos. You're kidding me. There's no way that's how that works. That's so, that's the funniest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. So it's time for that all-important game three. And I'm going to be honest with you. This looks like a pretty decent hand from both players. Tip here. They're going to go ahead and grab a Freezing Curses. Uh, main one. They're going to activate one day of peace. Runic Fountain. And then pass turn. All right, I feel pretty good about tier limit here. Uh, we're going to activate Scream, Normal Summon Rhino Heart. Activate the effect and Scream that is met with Freezing Curses. Annoying. Banishing a bunch of cards. We did hit Mudora here, which is important because we can chain the Mudora here in order to prevent them from drawing. Well, that's Yu-Gi-Oh for you. Uh, we'll go to the battle phase, attack in. It's Mudora, set one and pass. Okay, uh, well, Instant Fusion is good. Good. Uh, they're going to go ahead and get Gary. They'll trigger the effect of the Scream and the Celiac in order to negate the effect of Mudor. They let it go through, and they hit a Rhino Heart and a Scream, and what appears to be a Havness as well. So they're going to summon back the Rhino Heart, pitch the Celiac, and then activate the effect of the Rhino Heart in order to send a Tier Limit Kashira. We'll do that. Then we'll trigger the effect of the Murley in order to make the three mat. Yep, here comes Kaleido Heart. We can use Kaleido Heart to spin the Runic Fountain. Uh, then Kurikara Divine Carnate makes an appearance. Cool. Uh, we'll go to Limit Cash tier here. Oh, we, we actually hit uh, Destruta the Lost Dragon's Frisian. And then we will overlay for Baguska. Very cool. Celiac here in order to negate the Baguska. Go Tier Cash in order to mill two. We'll go Rhino Heart, Rhino Heart Effect, Scream Effect. This looks pretty over. We hit Agito and we hit Murley. We just have to not activate the Agito because that's the only way they get back in. Mud Dragon. I did not think we were going to get to Mud Dragon here. Chocanine into Dryden. Dryden Effect. Pop the Baguska. All right, this seems pretty Jover. Um, draw for turn. It's the it's not sufficient. Dryden in order to destroy the Celiac. Uh, trigger the effect of the Celiac in order to grab a Sheeran, and they'll pass turn. This should be all she wrote. Uh, let's go ahead and activate the effect of the Sheeran in hand. We will pitch this Mudora, I imagine. Trigger the effect of the Scream for three. Murley, now we even have a monster in Graveyard. They're going to chain Mudora. No big deal. Uh, we should be able to do more stuff this turn. Diviner of the Herald to send a Keldo to go into Baron to Fleur. Baron pop the set card. Go to battle phase attack for three, and we've got a Negate and a Dryden versus a two-card hand. Blessing is good. Uh, we will Baron that shit in draw phase, uh, and then in standby, we might even tag out for the Baron. We're not going to. Uh, they'll go end phase. We'll draw for turn. And I think we just have to switch our monsters to attack position here. We're going to go Destrudo in attack. Are we? Let's go. Battle phase. Tier Lament walks. Runic Naturia. The most washed deck of all time. Incredible. I'm going to be honest. Both those decks look like hot ass. I don't expect either of them to last uh, the next round. I'll be being completely real with you. Those decks did not look good. <laughs> Next up, we've got uh, Mathmech versus Last Turn FTK. Let's uh, let's see how it goes. It could go either way. Uh, so the Mathmech player is open full combo. Not particularly surprising since there's pretty much no hands this deck can produce that isn't full combo. Uh, and the Last Turn player seems to have opened uh, Treasure Panda, Flamvel Guard, Rainoud, Signet Mining, and Sanctuary. Um, what are they cooking? Okay, well, let's begin with Pot of Greed. I mean, that's a nice start. Into double Signet Mining. Excellent. Uh, next, we're going to activate Circular. Send a Sigma to the Graveyard and uh, Bedge, baby. Normal Summon Diameter. That's really funny. Uh, we'll trigger the effect of the Circular. Um, we're going to go ahead and get that Super Factorial. Uh, let's go Alan Burshin. Alan Burshin here. Wow, doing this in such a way that we... Uh, 
were actually able to retain the negate is what I would say if they hadn't just linked it off. Wicked here uh, with parallel level exceed at link point. That's going to summon a second one from deck. Uh, we'll go into Heat Soul. Addition targeting the Heat Soul. Uh, then afterwards, we can activate the Heat Soul. Let's draw a card, baby. Uh, we'll go into Pit Knight early. Set one and pass. That's probably enough. Okay, we're going to begin with Cyanet Mining. That's going to grab a Gazelle. We're going to normal summon the Gazelle and activate the effect in order to send uh, a, a Spinny. Uh, we'll go Super Factorial here in order to summon back three monsters. Um, and then we'll go for it. We'll activate Laplacian. Uh, we're going to send a Hand and Field. And they'll go Durandal targeting Heat Soul. We'll activate Heat Soul. There's Cyanet Mining. Okay, Durandal. That's going to get Laplacian. All right, cool turn. Uh, interesting one. Uh, that one, um, that one, I don't, uh, I don't really. Uh... <laughs> okay, that looks like the end of the game to me. Uh, quick, quick game one. Quick game one. But you know, anything could happen in game two. You know, really, anything at all. This time, last turn has won the die roll, and it appears they have opened uh, Fire Flint Lady, Durandal, World Legacy Gar Dragon, uh, Volcanic Rat, <laughs> and Summoner Monk. Could this be the last turn for last turn? Gonna go out on a limb here and say yes. They're gonna normal summon a summoner monk. Summoner monk effect. Uh, and there's the imperm, and that is the end of the game. Yep, all right. And that small world in hand will be full combo. Uh, we'll go ahead and reveal the droll as the bridge. Normal effect veiler. Oh, this is what we're doing. Okay, uh, parallel exceed here. That's gonna summon a parallel exceed from deck. Uh, we'll go splash mage, splash mage effect, uh, targeting parallel exceed. Uh, into that literally still FTK. That's still the OTK. That's still enough. One interaction, that was enough. He said one interaction, no circular, no nothing. He said that's enough. Close, close ones, close ones for sure. All right, we have reached the top eight and I am reticent to inform you that a significant amount of the cheesy decks did advance. Uh, somehow we already lost Sprite, which is a little horrifying. Cash Tira advanced, Dark Warrior advanced, Sword Soul advanced, Ishtir advanced, Prankit advanced, Math Mech advanced, Dragon Link advanced, and True Draco advanced. Let's lead with that one. For the first match of top eight, we have got the Blind Second True Draco versus Quantal Think on Dragon Link. Half Miss versus Quantal Think. Let's see what happens. Dragon Link beginning with a copy of the Bestial Lubellion to grab a copy of Sarnir. This hand looks like hot ass. Sarnir banishing the Lubellion. Normal summoning an Effect Veiler for Mascarena. And I'm going to be honest, if banish uh, the Sarnir from the graveyard for White Dragon Wyver Burster is full combo. I may have given Dragon Link a little too many tools. Pisty and LP. Oh god, it's been so long. Next, they're going to activate LP. That's going to summon a... Oh, right. Eclipse Wyver. Well, let's see how bad of a mistake that was. Uh, they're going to banish Chaos Emperor the Dragon of Arm again, then Drusworm target the... Oh, god. I may have made a mistake. Um, I did not realize that you could banish Eclipse Wyvern with the Bestials. Okay, well, I believe in Half Mist. They're going to begin with a copy of True Draco Heritage. They're going to tribute summon a Dynamite Knight. That's going to trigger the Heritage targeting the Branded Beast. Branded Beast target the Dynamite Knight. Dynamite Knight trigger into an Effect Veiler. Afterwards, they are going to activate Dragonic Diagram. That's a great card. Activate Dragonic Diagram. Pop this copy of Masterpiece for Heritage. Activate Heritage. Activate Heritage's Effect. Draw a couple of cards. And that's going to be met with a Heavenly Spheres. Okay, no big deal. Um, We just have to beat... Magnamut and Boraland. Uh, we're going to go Heritage again. Uh, tribute Summon the Dynamite Knight. Uh, walk over the Magnamut, whose effect will trigger. They're going to grab back a monster, and there's the Safer. Uh, down comes Chaos Emperor Dragon twice. Um, we'll go Dynamite Knight in order to grab, what, uh, two Draco Apocalypse. They're going to eat the entire board, go into Lubellion, and unfortunately, this is lethal. Ooh, time for game two, and it looks like actually Half Miss has elected to go first. Ooh, that's the coward's way out. Uh, thankfully, he was rewarded. Look at this. Dragonic Diagram and True Draco Heritage. True Draco Heritage to tribute summon a monster that could grab a copy of Dynamite Knight. Then Dragonic Diagram away that copy of um, Majesty. We're going to go Heritage into Card of Demise. Holding this ash for what? The, de the, de the desires. The desires. Okay, they'll go Dynamite Knight afterwards for an Apocalypse. And then they'll set two and pass. This is kind of an FTK. Um, reboot looking really good. Or they'll just pass because they bricked. Uh, some things never change about Dragon Link. Okay, we're going to pop this Apocalypse to go into uh, Disciples of the True Draco Phoenix. Uh, Draco Phoenix, shuffle three cards back. And then we will activate the effect of the Draco Phoenix and make ourselves a masterpiece. Uh, next, we're going to go Heritage for a couple of cards. That's going to be met with an Ash Blossom. I wonder if we fire off the Desires. We don't. We'll go to the battle phase and attack directly with Masterpiece before passing back to our opponent who draws for turn. 
Uh, that's a starter. Uh, quick launch here is going to grab a copy of Rocket Tracer. Uh, afterwards, we're going to go into a Striker Dragon. Into a copy of uh, Skill Drain. Into a Red Reboot. Okay, we are we are gaming. We are gaming. Uh, we're going to go for True Draco Apocalypse here. Uh, they're going to go ahead and grab a Boot Sector launch, then use the effect of the Striker Dragon to cycle back this copy of Rocket Tracer, activate the effect of the Boot Sector launch in order to grab Rocket Tracer, and Druid Swarm targeting this copy of Striker Dragon. Next, they're going to activate Rocket Tracer, targeting the Field Spell, and go into a Recharger. From here, they're going to normal summon a Drone Lockbird to make Dark and IP Mascarena into Access Code. Access Code here is going to theoretically be able to beat over the Masterpiece after eating the Draconic diagram and we'll do so okay all right unfortunately we can just flip up that skill drain again right that doesn't change anything right i feel like i feel like the game's just over all right there's branded regained there's levy near there's regained we can use regained it's like okay these are good cards um they don't beat true king's return though uh, okay, theoretically, we can use Druus Worm to eat the, uh, the Masterpiece every turn. That's, like, pretty good. Ah, this deck is ass. All right, we are going for the Miser's Pot of Greed, and we are rewarded Dynamite Knight. We get to eat this copy of, uh, Chaos Dragon Levin here. Branded Regained brings back the Druus Worm. We go to the Battle Phase. We walk over the Heavenly Spheres. We can activate the effect of the True King's Return, summoning back this Masterpiece. And then, uh, they can trigger the Heavenly Spheres to summon an Eclipse Wyvern. Uh, we'll go True Draco Heritage in order to draw a card, then summon a True Draco. We'll go for the Dynamite Knight. We get to eat the Regained here as well, set one and pass. I mean, this feels pretty good. They're going to go into Pisty, trigger the effect of the Eclipse Wyvern in order to banish Chaos Dragon. Uh, they will go Black Dragon Collapse, or to cycle it back. They'll go Chaos Dragon, the Emperor of Armageddon, activate the effect. A thousand life points. They are so low. 15, 25, normal summon the Eclipse Wyvern, going to Triple Burst. Eclipse Wyvern triggers again as alongside uh, Black Dragon Collapse Serpent. They're going to banish a Lubellion to go to Chaos Emperor Dragon. That's going to trigger the Eclipse Wyvern, get them back to Bestial Lubellion. This looks like it might be a lethal push. Going to Access Code Talker again. Access Code can banish itself to eat the Skill Drain. They're going to do just that. Bestial Magma, Chainlink 2, True King return bring back this copy of the masterpiece they are going to special summon the bestial magnemite and then eat the skill drain magnemite into the second skill drain um <clears throat> okay well um uh, now we just have to out this uh, chaos dragon uh that's a pretty good way to do so uh, we're going to use disciples of the true draco phoenix here uh in order to shuffle three cards back uh, draw a card, set one, and end. But I think the True Draco's return is going to solo. Chaos Space here. We are just digging for something. Uh, we're going to activate Chaos Space, shuffling back the access code. That's our that's our out. We're going to get to it eventually. Sarnir here targeting our own monster just to put pressure on. Uh, tribute Summon, Red Eyes DMD. Love that. Uh, we're going to go True King's Return. Uh, that does not do anything because now True Draco Apocalypse can contest the board. They'll take 1475 and concede. Game three is looking nice. Game three is looking nice. Delinquent duo quick launch. Droll and lock bird. Okay, let's make it happen. Okay, D duo will just hit droll. They're the greatest player of all time. They're the greatest player of all time. They are the greatest player of all time. The literal greatest player of all time. The greatest player of all time. Sometimes you are just the greatest player of all time. Oh my god, winning the 20% to hit the <laughs> card that ends their fucking turn. Uh, Magnemite into Romulus. Romulus effect that's going to grab from deck to hand a Ravine. Ravine effect that's going to get them anything they want. Pitching this Black Dragon Collapse Serpent to send a copy of Absa Rider to the graveyard. Absa Rider to grab a copy of Rocket Tracer. Going to normal some of the Rocket Tracer to go to an LP and a Pisty. Trigger the effect of the LP in order to get what? <laughs> sure. Uh, Red Eyes Metal Dragon uh, in order to go into Triple Burst in order to grab a Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon in order to Pisty back a Magnemite into Borland. Trigger the effect of the Borland. Target the Bestial Magnemite to summon back the Rocket Tracer to go into Baron Floor and pass turn. Magnemite at end step for Bestial Lubellion. Good luck. These are three good cards, though. Um, we're going to activate Apocalypse here to target the Baron de Fleur. That'll chase out the Baron de Fleur. We get to go for the Majesty Maiden here. That's going to be met with the Borland Dragon. We did do one of them, so at least we get to Heritage for one this turn. Or maybe we don't. Oh, we're going to Heritage for two. Oh my god, we're a genius. Okay, Disciples for one. Uh, Disciples to Tribute Summon. Heritage for three. No shot. Let's do it. Bada bing! Okay, we're in it, baby. We are in it. <laughs> uh, we're going to tribute someone uh, over this copy of um, 
uh, the True King's Return in order to eat the Baron. We can go Disciples of True Draco, Phoenix, and True King's Return. True Draco never dies, baby. Borland, target the Majesty Maiden. We're going to go grab the Rocket Tracer into Borlode Savage Dragon. We're going to meet that with the Dynamite Knight and the True King's Return. Dynamite Knight here activating another True King's Return. We must have banished the other one. No, off of Desires. No, here they all are in the banished file. Oh, my God. All right, special summon the Magnemot. Activate the uh, Magnemot effect. Go into Bestial Lubellion. Bestial Lubellion effect in order to send a Magnemot. Go for Branded Beast. We will eat the Dragonic diagram oh my oh no no can they survive can they survive this is so much damage pisty into the linked zone to bring back sarnir go to the battle phase attack over for 12 for a thousand for 25 for 28 will true kings return but we are just one attack off oh thank god dragon link advances oh thank the lord that was about to be really embarrassing. <laughs> Next up, we've got Phantom Thief 94 on Math Mech and Dunkoro on Prank Kid. Stop spamming Bedge. This is an interesting matchup. Uh, these are the two decks that play the closest to the ground in this tournament. So, you know, who knows? Um, it looks like Math Mech has won the die roll, which is honestly pretty shockingly strong. Uh, and the Math Mech player seems, or the uh, Pranked player rather, seems to have opened three Pranked cards in the opener. Great stuff. Uh, we're going to go Silent Mining here. We're going to go Math Mech Circular. Oh, we drew in a Biru too, which just solos prank it if they don't have adventure which they do we'll go circular here to grab a copy of super factorial we're going to make alan burshan alan burshan effect uh, let's go ahead and grab from deck to hand a copy of uh diameter diameter effect that'll target the sigma and then we're going to make a cybers wicked activate addition target the wicked then afterwards we can trigger the wicked banishing the alan burshan for another diameter let's go into heat soul into lingaribo set one and pass I'm not even going for heat soul um they're going to pot of greed, which is, you know, it's good. Oh, good. More kids. Look at this. One, two, three, four, five, six kids. What a great deck. Uh, we're going to Heat Soul. We draw a pot of greed. Um, we're going to go Water Enchanter at the Temple for right. Uh, unfortunately, this is like the most profitable super factorial that you'll ever see. Uh, you get to trigger all three. Uh, we're going to go for all three here. We're going to go Laplacian. Uh, Fateful Adventure triggers here. We'll just Laplacian CL2. Uh, we are going to send the Fateful Adventure and the token and a monster from hand. They're going to go Place. That's fine. Whatever. Uh, they're going to Normal Summon a Lampsies. Going to Meowmu. Trigger Lampsies. And trigger Place. That Chain Blocks. So we can't use uh, the negation on Laplacian here. That's something. They'll go Roxy's 1, Doodle Doe 2. We we'll, might as well negate the doodle though. That's fine. Um, they're going to go for fancies. Drew, Droll, and Lockbird. And uh, there's the rock. All right. Good uh, good game. Good game. Good game. I uh, played well all around. We're going to go Pot of Greed here. That's going to draw two. Oh, no. Not Droll and Lock. Diameter here is going to grab back Circular. And I think we just have Lethal here with Sigma. Uh, yeah. They're going to go Subtraction. Target the token, which is funny. And Dunkoro is just going to concede. So it's time for game two. And yeah, this is probably what you expect from decks like this. Um... Dunkoro has opened two Prank Kids, Nibiru, Infinite and Permanence, Cosmic Cyclone, but unfortunately for them, Phantom Thief 94 has opened a starter and also a copy of this card called Ash Blossom. So uh, that might do it. Uh, they're going to begin with a normal summon to Lampses. They're going to go into Miyamu, trigger the effect of the Lampses, and... Um yeah, great deck. Uh, draw for turn. I imagine we're going to lead with Heavy Storm. What if we led with evenly matched? That would be even funnier. Uh, upstart into Pot of Greed. Okay, that's that's not bad. Uh, into Diameter, into Link Aribo, into Thank God We Found a Starter. Uh, Parallel Exceed here. Uh, we're going to go into Splash Mage, activate Splash Mage, which is going for the OTK. Uh, we're going to make Update Jammer, go into Transco Talker, trigger the effect, target the Update Jammer. And here comes the Nibiru after Point of Resolution, I would imagine. Okay. We might still be able to do this. Set one path. Okay, we could do this. We could do this. Hold up. Normal summoning a prank it here, probably solos. Oh. Right, they they only have one Miyamu. Um Okay, in that case the game is over. Uh we'll draw for turn. Uh oh wow, his hand is really bad, but it is still gonna be sufficient to beat this terrible ass deck. Down comes Alan Burshan. Alan Burshan effect for two. Uh, we're just going to grab Circular. Okay, no more screwing around. Circular to send a copy of Sigma. Then we'll activate Sigma in Graveyard and activate the effect of the Circular. Are we getting Equation? Yes, we are. Next, we're going to go for Equation. Target Diameter. We just got Diameters coming out of our asshole. Let's go for G Golem Crystal Heart. Wow, what do you think this is? Syac format. Next, they're going to go for an Update Jammer and make an Access Code Talker and Dunkora will surrender. Next up, we've got two of the most powerful decks remaining in the tournament. Kash Tira versus Dark Warrior. We're going to head in right now. It looks like Dark Warrior has won the die roll, but Kashira has a little card in their opening hand called Dimension Shifter. They're going to lead with one for one, which punishes them for not shotgunning the Dimension Shifter because this has to send to the graveyard and does so for cost. Next, they're going to go Armageddon Knight uh, into uh, what appears to be just a Veritanicon to play. Oh no, we're making Galatea. We are making one negate. 
All right, best of luck. Uh, draw for turn. It's not a very good one. We're going to begin with a copy of Chicken Game. Chicken Game's got to draw someone. Okay, Fenrir is as good as it gets. We'll go Fenrir into an Arise Heart. Rise Heart here. That's going to be met with a Crescendo. Banish the Rise Heart, and there is the Wraith Soth. Uh, actually, this is kind of weird. Oh, no, it's not weird at all because we unbanned Galaxy Tomahawk. We're going to summon 10 million cards to our side of the field. And then we're going to make the Link 3 Auroradon. We'll trigger the effect of the Auroradon to summon three additional tokens. And then we will go ahead and use that Auroradon effect in order to summon a Mecha Phantom Beast from deck here, the O-Lion. We will go into Excel Synchron and Borload Savage Dragon with zero negates. Uh, that can't be right. Hold on. Where did we find this Cash Tira player? My locals? All right, so we're going to begin with the uh, Sold Two Tales of Noble Knights. We're going to grab an Armageddon Knight. This should be all she wrote, but for the uh, Nibiru in the hand. Uh, we'll go Galatea for an orchestrated Babel. We'll activate Babel's effect, and then we'll activate it for Noble Knight Olivier. Afterwards, down comes the rock, and... Uh... We'll activate the effect of the World Wand, summoning back this copy of Skeleton. We'll go to IP Mask Rain and trigger the effect of the Skeleton in order to bring back this copy of Galatea. We're going to overlay for Dingirsu, use Dingirsu in order to send a grave this copy of Nibiru. Next, we're going to special summon this copy of Malicious to make Rusty Bardish, and Rusty Bardish Control probably gets us there. We'll go to the battle phase. 21, 26, good luck. Um, Fenrir maybe does it? Um... <laughs> <laughs> That's the best draw remaining in the deck. Time for game two, and this is a weird one. The cashier player going first is open to point of the Red Lotus Droll and Lockbird Fenrir. But not much else. Uh, we can go Fenrir, grab Rise Heart, and then just, like, make the the Xyz pass. That seems okay. Um, or we will make Diablosis pass. I don't know if I agree with that one. Uh, a pointer here is good because they don't have a second starter. They're going to go Radiant into Set Shadow Mist Pass, and having a monster on our side of the field does actually lose us the game. Right, that's Cash Tira. I wonder if you even don't attack into that under the assumption that it's uh, exactly Shadow Mist. It doesn't matter. They get to normal summon Neo Space Connector here that's going to summon Aqua Dolphin. They'll use Aqua Dolphin here in order to grab Zephyrus the Elite, uh, or in order to grab uh, Drone Lockbird, rather, into Ice Hold, into Ice Hold Effect, into the end of the game. We'll grab Armageddon Knight, and wow. I mean... Uh, Chat is chat is being very un they're being very mean to this cash tier player, but what did you want them to do exactly? That um the Diablosis was a little sussy, but they still lost that game a hundred percent of the time. That is non-negotiable. Uh virus swordsman into uh Codebreaker, Virus Berserker, Virus Berserker, Summon 2, build their deck better. What do you want Cash Tira pilots to put in their deck? They are playing every playable card already. There are simply not enough good Cash Tira cards. Tomahawk line? No, we just saw the Tomahawk line. It doesn't do anything. <laughs> All right, anyway, speaking of not doing anything, uh, Dark Warrior advances. All right, next up is a matchup that chat is just... God, they're so excited for. Look at look at that chat. I just love when you all find a shortcut to comedy. It's Sword Soul versus Ishizu Tier Lament, a matchup you might have seen a couple of formats ago. Uh, we've got Armin on Sword Soul, has won the die roll and opened a hand of hot nothing. This Desires kind of has to save it. Uh, Desires here, let's find... Uh, yeah, that'll do it. Uh, we'll go Long Wand lead in order to go into Baron, then we'll trigger the effect of the Long Wand, then normal summon this Taya. We can banish this copy of Long Wand from the graveyard. You know we could have done that anyway. No, we couldn't have because we would have had to discard the Taya. Anyway, we're going to go for Chi Shao here. Chi Shao here, one Taya, two. We're going to send a copy of Ashana into the graveyard. Grab an Emergence, fire off Emergence. Uh-oh. Oh, we don't have the material for Protoss. We're just passing. Uh, Protoss would have gone brazy here. Tier Limit Scream we are leading with. We're going to begin with a copy of Merly 1, Scream 2. We'll negate the Merly, which seems kind of bad, but I mean, what do you want, really? Uh, Saliak and Agito. I guess we will bear in the Agito. Weird chain order here. Terraforming afterwards is a good copy of Periosis. Uh, they'll go for Periosis, and then they'll go Sheeran in order to mill a bunch of cards. Let's go Tier Limit, Cash Tira, and Rhino Heart. That's going to mill two additional cards on field, right? We can chain block the Rhino Heart, too. We'll send three to the graveyard, use the effect of both the Tier Limit, Cash Tira, and the Sheeran. Oh, thank God we found enough for Graffa. So this is actually really weird here. We have to go Chi Shao negate the Graffa, then a point of resolution. We can go Nibiru. Um, when I said weird, I meant game winning. All right, so that's the biggest Nibiru in the history of time. Uh, they do get to trigger the effect of the Merly here, and they do get to go into their powerful Kaleido Heart, but that's it. Uh, and we've got a little card in our hand that might resolve that problem for us. Wait, are they just dead to Snatch Deal? They are literally just dead to Snatch Deal. 
No, no, no. No, they're not. No, they're not. Because Pellerino is on the field. Okay, we do still have to we do still have to play the game. And we are unable to. Alright, okay. <laughs> Chalk one up for Ishtir. Alright, one game away, baby. One game away. Okay, this is the Ishtir hand that I'm familiar with. Let's go. Normal summon uh Diviner of the Herald into nothing. Kelvec, please. We hit a lot of King of the Swamps. Uh, we didn't do nothing else though. Uh, we'll make Baron and pass. That's, I mean, that's tier limit. That's, uh, that's tier limit. And now we lose the game. Uh, okay, Vashutta into Monk of the Tenyi. Vashutta contests the Barone. Barone negate. And then Long One pitch this copy of Ashana. We can even trigger the Ashana. We'll go Barone into Barone. Deal 12. Go for Pot of Desires. That's going to be an Ash Blossom. No big deal. This Emergence in hand is going to be very punishing. We are going to grab a Taya. And guess what? We haven't normaled. Taya banish the Protoss. We'll get a token to our side of the field. It's Baxia time. Baxia effect. We're going to bounce that entire hand. We'll trigger the effect of the Taya. Let's just remember that the Kelbeck is in the hand. At Hara here in order to cycle back the Protoss. Come on. Uh, we're going to go for Moye here, revealing the Protoss. And oh my god. I Sometimes I forget what Sword Soul is capable of. This is a horrifying deck. Oh, uh, we're going to grab a um, Magnemut and Emergence, go to combat, and this is lethal. Wow. Oh, 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 oh man. Okay, so it sells a little crazy. So it's time for that old imported game three, and look at that. Another banger-ish to your hand. Can you believe that there are people who play this at the TCG? <laughs> like, it is worse in the TCG than in this tournament, and there are people who open hands worse than this because Aguido is limited, and they think, yeah, I got to bring this to a YCS. This is like my ticket to topping. Uh, yeah, well, I can't really argue with that play. Actually, I can. It turns on, uh, the, uh, the Ecclesia. It doesn't matter. Uh, Vishana here. Uh, we're gonna go Vishana. Special summon at Hara. We just make Vaxia already. Vaxia bounce this card. Uh, Vaxia effect. We're gonna cycle for the Adhara. Uh, then we can make, uh, you know, we can make Chaofeng. Uh, we even beat the double Nibiru in hand. That's the funniest thing I've ever seen. Uh, Chi Xiao here, Moye here. All we got to do is get Long One as hop, skip, and a jump to lethal. God, okay. I am actually really glad that Sword Soul does not exist in this capacity anymore. That they just, like, neutered this thing. All right. Uh, that's uh, that's sufficient. You can go to combat now. Uh, 28, 41, 28, and um, Sword Soul advances. All right, folks. We are down to our semi-finalists. Out of all of these degenerate strategies, the four that have persevered are Math Mech, Sword Soul, and then on the evil half of the bracket, <laughs> Dark Warrior and Dragon Link. I'm pulling for these guys. These guys, not as bad as they could have been. First up, the least badge match in the history of time, Dragon Link versus Math Mech. Oh, and we're off to a banger start. Dragon Link has opened Saferd, Saferd, Saferd versus Math Mech's Subtraction, Subtraction Edition. This is, whoa, my God. The sparks are flying in this heated battle. Oh, wait, I just realized Math Mech cannot possibly win this matchup. This deck plays Bestials. This is the last deck in the tournament that's playing Bestials. It's the only deck in the tournament that was playing Bestials. Well, it was going to have to attempt to limp over the finish line eventually. Uh, special Summon Wyver Burster, Romulus. Trigger Romulus for Ravine, Ravine Effect, uh, Ravine. Uh, pitch this copy of Safer for... Okay, we maybe should not have unbanned Eclipse Wyvern. It has been insane all day. That was that was maybe a mistake. Lubellion. Uh, Lubellion here in order to set Branded Beast. We're going to go into Hieratic Seal of the Heavenly Spheres. Safer to cycle Lubellion past turn. You would think it's not a very good setup until you realize it's got two bestials. All right, Silent Mining's good. Uh, we'll grab a diameter. Circular here sending Sigma. Uh, I guess we'll go for Sigma. There's one bestial gone. Uh, normal diameter. That triggers Circular and Diameter. I guess if we theoretically we could retain the negate. Oh, we're just going to make an early Laplacian. Uh, we are going to activate all three. It's going to be met with Branded Beast. We have to negate with Laplacian. They are going to activate seals to negate the negate the negate. Uh, we will grab a card from hand and a card from field. And then we will get our back walls blown out. Uh, the special summon of Magnemut. So we do have addition, which is kind of an extender. Got subtraction, also an extender. I don't know what we're going to do with them. Uh, oh, this is lethal, isn't it? Yeah, okay. That's, I'm in. It's just lethal. Uh, access code talker, update jammer. Uh, you know, we, we, we've all seen this before. Um, let's eat that bad boy, go to battle phase, and then realize that unfortunately Druus Worm as a blocker is sufficient to stop this. Okay. <laughs> uh, we're going to normal summon a copy of Black Metal Dragon into Striker Dragon, and that should be the end of the game. Uh, we are going to banish three for Chaos Dragon Levy near to take a card out of the hand. Come on, unnecessary. 
Ravine in order to pitch this copy of Safer, send a copy of Chaos Emperor Dragon Safer to cycle the Chaos Emperor Dragon. We'll activate Bissia Lubellion in order to grab a copy of Magnemite. We'll activate Magnemite. Banishing the Circular from the Graveyard. Then we'll activate Magnemites on field before scaling this... Uh, Chaos Emperor Dragon will activate the effect, uh, cycling back the Sarnir, going for Bissial Lubellion, triggering its effect to set branded regain. Sarnir targeting the access code. This has got to be lethal. It is 1,000, 25, 25, 25. Okay, one down. Time for that all important game two. And I'm going to be honest with you, the single Bistial solos this math in my hand. All right, we're going to begin with a copy of Upstart Goblins. Find something crazy. That's not it. Sign it, mining, pitching the small world. We'll grab a circular, circular effect. Uh, next, we're going to activate the effect of the diameter and the circular in sequence, targeting the sigma. We will go for the circular effect for a super factorial, then overlay for an alumbertion. Alumbertion effect in order to grab from deck to hand a copy of diameter. We're going to go into wicked, activate addition, target the wicked, special summon it, and then trigger the effect of the wicked in order to grab another sigma. Let's go into linger rebo, set one and pass. Ball drake it in step for diameter, and suddenly our super factorial does not negate. Our opponent's going to go for quick launch. Quick launch here for a... Rocket Tracer, then we'll go Bear and target the back row. Probably waited a little too long on that. Actually, there was no reason to wait because this only goes into Alumbertion. We'll go Alumbertion effect here, uh, I guess. And there's Chaos Space. This seems pretty over. Do get to draw and Lockbird, but they retained the Bear and Negate very wise here. Wyver Burster into Striker Dragon. Striker Dragon in order to grab Boot Sector Launch. Wyver Burst to grab Black Dragon Collapse Serpent. Black Dragon Collapse Serpent into Romulus into Collapse Serpent into Romulus Effect. Grab a Dragon's Ravine and another White Dragon. They'll activate Chaos Space, shuffling back the Chaos Dragon Levineer. Bestial Lubellion off the top in order to go into Magnemut, targeting the Circular Engrave. From here, we can activate Magnemut's on field effect and then cycle for Bestial Lubellion, which gets us a set copy of Brandon. Regain. We'll go into Unicorn, shuffling back this Wicked into Access Code Talker with nothing left on the field. We can just go ahead and clean these two up before proceeding to the battle phase and getting in for lethal. Our final semi-final is Dark Warrior versus Sword Soul, a truly degenerate deck versus a deck that really just does the same play every single game. If my girl and Moye drowning, you can catch me at her funeral adding a worm monster from deck to hand. We have Digital Duke versus Armin. Let's see how far we can go here. We are going to begin with a copy of Ecclesia. Thankfully, no Ash Blossom down. We're going to go Moye, Moye reveal, I suppose, at Hara. We'll summon a token to our side of the field and then make ourselves a copy of Chi Shao. Chi Shao effect, Moye effect. We'll draw a card and add a Long Wand from deck to hand. Or an Emergence. Uh, we're going to go Emergence here in order to grab a Long Wand. Next, we're going to go Long Wand, pitching this copy of Sathana and getting a token to our side of the field before making a copy of Chi Xing, or Cheng Ying, rather. Uh, we're going to set one and pass. All right, uh, do your worst. Reinforcement of the army is a card. Uh, they're going to normal or special summon a dark refer rather. Uh, that is definitely going to eat an infinite permanence. Uh, afterwards, they can go for reinforcement of the army to do their normal summon. It's an Armageddon Knight. Activate Armageddon Knight. That's going to be met with an Ash Blossom. Uh, Living Fossil for Vion. Uh, they'll use the effect of Isold here um, and accomplish nothing because we still have the Chi Shao online. And then because we banished a card, we can also banish the Destrudo and the Vion, and they'll pass turn. Well, that's Dark Warrior, folks. We're going to normal summon a Moye. We're going to reveal the Adhara here. Uh, we are going to eat a fat surrender. Oh, my God. What the hell kind of hand is this? Nibiru, Droll, Ash, Chaos Hunter, Sathana. I mean, it's a it, it stops the opponent. It doesn't actually do anything. Uh, we're going to lead with a copy of Ash Blossom, which is not that great because we discarded a what appears to be a, um, a Harpoor. We'll go Instant Fusion for Raijin into Shade Brigandine into Isold. That's good enough. We're going to grab a Neospace Connector, and down comes Droll and Lockbird. Uh, actually, I don't think it matters that much here. We're going to go uh, Armageddon Knight in order to send from deck to graveyard a copy of Zephyros. Zephyros, bounce the Armageddon Knight, and then we'll activate Chaos Hunter. Pitching the Nibiru? I guess you have to, right? Because otherwise you can't normal summon Moye, and if my girl and Moye drowning okay this is not enough we'll lead Sathana. we'll go into monk of the tenny we'll go to the battle phase walk into this copy of predator plan verity anaconda summon back monk of the tenny eat the dpe attack over the anaconda but we don't have a monster with levels to summon the destrudo off of that seems pretty crappy all right we're going to normal summon a neospace connector and concede so it's time for that all-important game three, and I'm going to be honest with you, I am rooting for Sword Soul. I really do not want two D-Gen decks in finals. Um, this hand looks good from Sword Soul. Uh, okay, this hand actually looks really bad. Now, for what it's worth, Baron Pass is not bad into this hand, because as you can see, it doesn't actually do anything unless the opponent commits. Uh, okay, um, let's lead. Oh, no, wait, we have Vashada Edhara. We're fine, we're fine. Everything's okay, chat. Chi Shao here. We'll go Chi Shao into uh, Emergence. Emergence into... Uh, Protoss. Uh, then we'll go Long One, Pitch at Hara, uh, trigger the effect of the Long One, and there's Nibiru. Okay, well, uh, we tried. 
Uh, and we also succeeded because we have Protoss. So we're going to Protoss called Dark. Uh, good luck, asshole. Uh, Adhara here is going to add back Long One. Uh, we are going to get absolutely wrecked by evenly matched. Is what I would say if we had a way to get it off the field. Okay, we will Ash Blossom this one for one. And I guess normally Armageddon Knight. And send a, send a, send a monster that we can't uh, use the effect of. Okay, we'll activate Protoss again. And I guess we don't have an out to either Protoss or the Nibiru. All right, this is, this is the first game in which Protoss has looked like a problem. That said, we are now locked on the Nibiru token, but it's going to set one and pass because they are still under Protoss. Uh, we will activate Vishuddha to bounce that bad boy, uh, activate Long One, special summon a token, and then the burn will do the trick. Okay, um, we may have erred in, in removing Protoss, but I am happy that Sword Soul made it to finals. Folks, it all comes down to this. Sword Soul a deck playing exactly one of the 122 cards I removed from the ban list, versus Dragon Link, a deck playing like 40 of them. Which of these two decks will win? Will I, like Icarus, have flown too close to the sun and burn my wax wings on Romulus's crest? Or will I, like Daedalus, escape judgment and laugh as my stupid ah kid falls to his death? I'm pretty sure that's what happened. I, I didn't really pay too much attention to the myth of Icarus. Anyway, let's watch some Yu-Gi-Oh, am I right, folks? All right, Dragon Link has won the die roll. This hand looks decent, but it's facing down Imperm plus, uh, plus full combo. <laughs> Imperm, Nibiru full combo. All right, Wyver Burst and a Romulus. Romulus effect is pretty decent Imperm. Feels all right. Uh, we will trigger the effect of White Dragon Wyver Burster, and then we will activate Bestial Magnemot. And actually, it's not very good at all because I forgot I unbanned LP, which means we can go LP, Black Dragon Clap Servant for White Dragon Wyver Burster, uh, Triple Burst Dragon, and now we have to Nibiru. Uh, okay. Well, you know, that's the end of the turn. We could do this. Uh, Bestial Magnemot coming down. Let's uh, just clean this up. Don't think we have too many darks and lights here. Gonna fire the Ash Blossom Joy Spring. It eats a pot of desires that's pretty much its intended goal in this matchup we will go for a chi Xiao, activate the effect of the chi Xiao, activate the effect of the moye grab a copy of long one and grab an emergence we'll activate long one summon itself activate the effect of the long one summoning a token emergence afterwards for protoss and then afterwards we're going to make a changing trigger the effect of the long one activate the effect of the protoss trigger the effect of the changing in order to banish both the token and a safer from the graveyard then protoss call dark proceed to the battle phase and get in for well over lethal textbook from sword soul oh my goodness gracious this is the hand of all time boy this ooh, this <laughs> I do not know if I want to watch this one. Quantal Think going first with anti-spell fragrance in the opener against zero spells. Lubelli needing an Ash Blossom, needing a Psy Frame Gear Gamma. We have found the lose condition. This will allow us to grab a Bistial Magnum to hand. Now we can make Masquerina use Magnum to banish this copy of the Gamma and treat the effect of the Magnumut for a Lubellion. That Lubellion's going to go for Branded Beast. Set one pass Magnumut. Grab a White Dragon Wyver Burster and draw for turn. That's the craziest draw in the deck. We're going to lead with Ecclesia. Down comes uh, the anti-spell, I guess. Sword Soul of Taya will trigger the effect of the Long One. Long One here. Uh, I imagine we are going to try to go for something crazy. Beast coming down. It's going to be followed up with Destrudo. Is this it? Down comes Yazi. Can't be targeted. We'll activate the effect of the Yazi, popping this anti-spell fragrance, activating the effect of the Yazi for a Sword Soul Moye. If my girl and Moye both drowning, one's getting hit by an effect there. We'll go Shaman of the Tenny, cycle back the Taya, activate the effect of the Taya, banish a Moye, go into a token, Chi Shao, battle phase. All right, can we beat Chi Shao Pass? This hand's looking all right. That's a decent draw. Down comes the White Dragon Wyvern Burster into Striker Dragon. We're going to grab a copy of Boot Sector Launch. We're going to trigger the effect of the White Dragon uh, Wyvern Burster into this copy of uh, Chaos Dragon Levian here. We're going to trigger the effect of the Chi Shao and the effect of the Banished Blackout to get a token as well. We'll go to the Bestial Lubellion, trigger the effect of the Bestial Lubellion for Branded Regained. We're going to go into Black Dragon Collapse Serpent into Regained into a copy of White Dragon Wyvern Burster Cycle Back for a Romulus. We're going to go Romulus into a Dragon Ravine Set Chaos Emperor, the Dragon of Armageddon, activate the effect of 1,000 life points, and we will cycle back the Magnabot, activate the effect. Of Dragon Ravine, pitch this copy of Magnum onto the graveyard, send an Absor out of Dragon, and grab a Rocket Tracer as well. Down comes LP, down comes Black Dragon Collapse Serpent, Normal Summon Rocket Tracer, Pisty, LP, LP Effect, grab Eclipse Wyvern! I have made a horrible mistake. Eclipse Wyvern, a banished copy of Red Eyes DMD. We're gonna banish the Eclipse Wyvern with the Magnum in hand. We're gonna trigger the effect of the Magnum and the Eclipse Wyvern in sequence in order to get us back this copy of Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon. And we can cycle back the Eclipse Wyvern with the Pisty, no! Into Borlode Savage Dragon, into Second Pisty, into the Borland, targeting the LP in order to summon back the Tracer, and down comes DMD and Baron de Fleur and Chaos Emperor, the Dragon of Armageddon, triggering the effect of the Eclipse Wyvern again. This is so unbelievably Jover. Time for that all-important 
game three. I'm going to level with you. This is two pretty good hands. Got Ash Blossom, Valor, which contests exactly Pot of Desire's uh, Moye. We have the long one. Oh, this is awful. Here we go. We're going to lead with this copy of Pot. I imagine it'll fetch the Ash. Yep. Next up is Emergence. We're going to go Emergence, grab, I imagine, Moye. Normal Summon Moye. I bet that gets the Valor. There it comes. And now, Long One Pitch Emergence. In order to summon a token, we can use the token in the Moye for Chi Shao. We will do that. Chi Shao Moye. Uh, we're going to grab an Adhara. Oh, and a Blackout. Chi Shao Blackout Pass. Very beatable board, especially with these draws. We're going to go Red Eyes Black Metal Dragon into Striker Dragon. We're going to Ash Blossom the Black Metal. Oh, man. Sarnir target the Black Metal here. And then afterwards, we'll go to the Battle Phase, attacking into the Long One. That's going to prompt the Blackout, eating these two. And then afterwards, we're going to use Blackout to send a copy of Bestial Lubellion to the graveyard. Magnemut targeting the Sarnir. We're going to trigger the Magnemut's on-field effect. Then we'll cycle for the Lubellion. Lubellion effect. We're going to Chishao negating the Lubellion. Afterwards, we're going to activate the Blackout to get a token to our side of the field. We're going to make Black Dragon Collapse Serpent into Romulus. Black Dragon Collapse Serpent and Romulus triggering in sequence. We're going to grab a copy of Dragon Ravine. There's no way they have plays from here. Dragon Ravine, they're going to activate Dragon Ravine in order to pitch this copy of Boot Sector Launch in order to send a copy of Safer to the graveyard. Safer to cycle the Lubellion. Add the Lubellion back to hand. Bissio Lubellion hasn't activated in hand this turn. Druus Worm targeting the Striker Dragon. We're going to summon it to our side of the field. Summon the White Dragon Wyvern Burster into LP in a triple burst. Druus Worm eat the Chi Shao. Afterwards, we can trigger the effect of the LP in order to summon from deck a Rocket Tracer. Rocket Tracer popping the field spell in order to grab a tuner from deck. And then we can make a Boralend Dragon. Use Boralend Dragon targeting this copy of Charger so we can also end on a Boralode Savage. Holy shit. I... Uh, there's no way. There's just no way. Okay, wait, wait, wait. We still have plays. Summon a Shunna. From here we can go to Psychic and Punisher. Holy guacamole. We're going to go ahead and banish that Boralode Striker Dragon and the Psychic and Punisher at Har here to go into Monk of the Tenya Shunna in order to uh, summon from Decca Sathana. We'll go at Har here in order to cycle back this copy of a Shunna. We'll make Monk and we'll go to End Phase. No, it's so Jover. All we need is an effect monster, and we have one in Ball Drake. Absorouter Dragon, Trigger for Rocket Tracer, Branded Regained, Battle Phase. We do get to go for Sathana here, which eats the Lubellion, but we have nothing to deal with the Borland Dragon. No! <laughs> oh. Two one for Dragon Link. Perhaps we have erred. What was I thinking? Pot of Greed? Delinquent Duo? Those cards are terrible. They could come off tomorrow. But LB and Eclipse Wyvern. Oh my god. We have done a chat. We've done, what, five of these now? I have found my limit. It is exactly 122 cards. Two-thirds of the ban list was always a fool's undertaking. But unfortunately, trying to dance around Dragon Link is the hardest thing in the known universe. This deck plays every single card on the ban list if you let it wow i can't believe how many of the cards that we took off are found uniquely in this strategy where do we go from here we have faced the edge of the universe and found the human will lacking the opposite direction Maybe we start banning thousands of cards and seeing what survives. I don't know. Whatever the case, I come to you at the end of this video, humbled and defeated. And making Pisty and LP pointing to the same zone. Congrats to Quantal, and congrats to Dragonlink.